This is your pattern predictions, a look at the next two weeks of weather as we round out 2025 and kick off the new year. Meteorologist Danielle Noyce here, and you can get the 14-day forecast in our free weather app. Search One Degree Outside Weather. This is the why behind the 14-day, though. What you may see shift or change just a little bit in the app in the coming couple of weeks. Quick reminder, if you love winter, if you love snow, if you love winter sports, skiing, snowmobiling, snowboarding, this is for you. Snowsports.OneDegreeOutside.com. The only winter weather forecast you need. All New England resorts and snowmobile clubs on maps, lift hole potential, travel forecast, wind chill, snow forecasts, our discussions on there too, special promo code snow SNO 2025 through the end of the month. All right, let's start with the jet stream. River of air high in the sky, steer storms, acts like a thermostat. So when it's bumped up on the south side of it, you're warmer. So we've got a bump up in the jet stream here. So it's warm for the last week of December across much of the country but not here in New England. We've got the jet stream nearby and these continued shots of cold air that come in. I'm gonna play things through and you do notice that there are both some Southern stream and Northern stream energy that combine. And that's been the theme, right? These quick hitting disturbances that come by, but who is on the colder side? Us in New England and a lot of the country continues to see into the start of the new year, some warmer than average temperatures. The jet stream continuing to bring these dips, these troughs out of Canada and then into the Great Lakes and New England right on through the start of January as well. So what does that mean for us in terms of the cold air? And we can look to the height to 500 millibars. Think of it as a layer of the atmosphere. The purples representing the colder air and the oranges and the yellows you see here, warmer air. And the cold air is bottled up in Canada, but we get these shots that are coming in. So for us, it's a cold start to the week. It will ease somewhat. And then we get another blast of cold that comes in. But notice a lot of the central southern United States is warm, record-breaking warmth, in fact, through Christmas Day and through the end of December. Not for us here at home, though. As we head towards the end of the month, another shot of cold air coming into the northern plains and right over the northeastern United States. More warmth, hold on a sec, building in for the last couple of days of December into the central United States. Wait a sec, more chill that battles back against it. So when you get these zones where you've got a big temperature clash, that can also mean storminess that will come across the Pacific Northwest with some atmospheric moisture coming into Southern California through the end of the month with the atmospheric river. And then these storms will parade off to the east. Now look at the temperature difference from normal. The reds representing, and even some of the whites here, above normal temperatures. So for the next several days, through the end of the month, a lot of warmth. We're talking about highs in the 70s, 80s breaking records all the way up into the northern plains where we're running like 20 to 40 degrees above average here for Christmas the day after and some of that will translate to the east but not over New England. We are cooler than average as we head towards the end of the month. There will be some days where we're near seasonable but it's just not long lived and then towards the start of the new year there's that zone setting up again with a blast of cold air ready to come back in out of western Canada and come into the Northern Plains and New England again. There are some signs we get some relatively warmer air for a couple of days towards the start of January. But like I mentioned, it tries to come in and then the cold air just battles back. So that does set up some storminess and a jet stream that's right over the Northeast, which will mean some chances for snow and maybe some mixed events the farther south you come. What does that mean for average high temperatures? Let's break it down in simple terms, right? So towards the Christmas day timeframe, we're near seasonable. Then a shot of cold comes in for Friday and Saturday behind a storm. As the relatively milder air tries to come back on Sunday, we climb back up into the mid thirties. Then cold air comes back in, moderates a little bit towards New Year's Eve and New Year's Day in the lower thirties, and then kind of stays there after that. So. It's still a cold wintertime pattern with these shots of chilly air that do come in and then ease somewhat and then come back in. And that's the same for the overnight low temperatures as well. The coldest Friday morning and Saturday morning. And then again, as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. So the day before New Year's Eve and even the teens heading into the start of the new year too with average New England average, by the way, only right around or just over 20 for overnight lows as well. What about precipitation? Well, we've got our Tuesday light snow event and it comes back down a little bit for Christmas and quieter. There may be some lingering snow showers in Eastern New England for a Christmas Eve day early. 
And then during the day on Friday, that next system likely to take a track to ourselves, but we get about a 60% chance that some snow comes into New England. Then on Sunday, we bump it back up. Another disturbance comes in, pockets of snow, could be a rain snow line in far southern New England, depending on track. Then we get a bit of a quieter period, although, you know, Matt's talked about this before, more than like three days out in this type of setup where we get these fast moving disturbances, it really is all about timing. So that's why you see towards the start of the new year, the first several days of January, it does go back up to like a 30 to 40% chance because the jet stream is active. There's some storminess nearby. So every couple of days, there's basically something to watch. And it's a matter of if we can get some phasing of some storms across the Northeast. So in terms of precipitation, there's just going to be a ton that comes into the West Coast, including California, right on through the last week of December with a lot of moisture and that atmospheric river that's shifting from north to south in the coming days. Pretty quiet with much below average precipitation, central eastern United States. Then you notice another bullseye, Great Lakes to New England, where we should be near average. But for snowfall, there's not a ton of cross the country because we have such warm air, not for us, but like I showed you before, in much of the country for the last week of December. So the snowpack is really confined to the spots that get those shots of cold that come back, measuring it in like three to five feet on the highest summits across the Pacific Northwest, the Intermountain West as well. And then where is the rest of the snow? Across Canada, the Great Lakes, and right here at home, where there's pretty good agreement that one to two feet of snow with some locally higher totals are likely right where we want it across northern New England, the mountains, upstate New York as well. Of course, all depends on storm timing and track, but looks like a snowy stretch and a colder than average stretch as well. You can always, of course, watch us on TV with your smart TV. Just open up the YouTube app, search One Degree Outside Network. We are on anytime, anywhere, 24-7. If you're on a computer or tablet or traveling, we're always at OneDegreeOutside.live. And you can just tap the home screen of our app to watch as well.